Are you wondering how you can create a monogram design in Illustrator? If you're an enthusiast, then you're in the right place. Hi there everyone, my name is Andre Marius. I've been working in Illustrator for over 10 years. And in this Plus tutorial, I'll put my experience to use as I show you step-by-step step how you can create this round monogram design using Adobe Illustrator. Before we begin, make sure to check out Envato Elements, where with a simple subscription, you can get unlimited access to millions of creative digital assets, such as music, graphics, including monograms, photos, fonts, and many more. You can subscribe right now with the link in the description. Let's move to Illustrator to create a new document. Select pixels from this drop-down menu. Set the width and the height to 850 pixels. Make sure that the color mode is set to RGB and the resolution to 72 pixels per inch. And then you can click this button to create your new document. Press Ctrl and 0 to fit the artboard on your entire screen. And before we start the work on the design, let's open the panels that will be used throughout this tutorial. All you have to do is go to Window in the menu bar. First of all, make sure that the control panel is active and then open all the panels that have this check mark. Once you're done, go to view and show grid to enable the grid. Again, go to view and this time enable the snap to grid feature. And for this tutorial, you need a grid line every five pixels. So let's go to edit, preferences, guides and grid. Enter five in this grid line every box. Click OK to apply the changes and let's start with the ellipse tool from your toolbar. First of all, select the fill and remove the color. Reselect the stroke and replace the black with yellow. And now you can either click and drag while holding down the shift key to easily create a perfect circle. Keep in mind that you can have a look inside the info panel to know the size of your shape as you're creating it. Or much easier, you can simply click on your artboard, set the width and the height to 310 pixels, and just click OK to create your new shape. Increase the stroke weight to 40 points, and then move to the control panel. Make sure that the alignment is set to artboard, and then click these two buttons to easily move your shape in the center of the artboard. Now press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on your selection. Switch to the Direct Selection tool and go to Object, Path and Add Anchor Points. Repeat this move. Select just this point and press the Delete key to remove it. And then switch to the Rectangle tool from your toolbar. Use it to create a 130 by 135 pixels shape. Replace this yellow with a red. Again, click these two buttons to easily center this new shape. Press the V hotkey to quickly select the selection tool and use it to move this shape in this location. Press the A hotkey to select the direct selection tool and go again to object, path and add anchor points. Select just this point hold down the shift key and drag it 50 pixels down. Remember to have a look inside the info panel to know when you get to 50 pixels and then select this point and remove it. Next, you need to select both of your paths. Press Ctrl C and then Ctrl F to add copies in front. You can open your layer from the layers panel to see these copies. Press the D hotkey, which will replace the current appearance settings with the default ones. Select the fill and remove the color. Select the stroke and replace the color with green. Increase the stroke weight to 6 points. And then click the stroke button to open the stroke flyout panel. And check this round join button. Return to the layers panel. Hold down the shift key to select both of these original paths. Go to Object and Expand to expand the applied strokes. Press Shift, Ctrl, and G to ungroup this resulting group of shapes. Again, press the D hotkey. Select the fill and remove the color. Select the stroke and replace the color with green. 
increase the stroke weight to 12 points. Don't forget to check this round join button. And then move to the Pathfinder panel and click this Unite button, which will unite your selected paths. Now add to your selection the rest of the paths and go to Object, Path and Outline Stroke. Unite the resulting shapes and then turn them into a compound path, either by pressing Ctrl and 8 or by going to Object, Compound Path and Make. This will be your monogram shape. Before we start stylizing it, let's create the background. So select the rectangle tool from your toolbar. Double click the fill color and replace it with 31, 42 and 68. Click again on your artboard to create an 870 pixel square. Center this new shape and move it below your monogram shape in the layers panel. And then reselect your monogram to stylize it. We'll apply the same gold gradient that was used to create this gold text effect. Check out the link in the description if you wish to learn how you can create this text effect once you're done creating your monogram. So let's return to our monogram. Select the fill and focus on the gradient panel. Just click this linear gradient button to apply a linear gradient for your selected shape. Set the angle to 90 degrees and then focus on the gradient colors to adjust your gradient. Double click this one. Change the color mode to RGB and replace the color with 242, 185 and 58. Move to this other color. Again, change the color mode to RGB and replace the color with 206, 151 and 40. Let's hold down the shift key and drag a copy of this color to the right. Keep it selected and set the location to 70%. Click just once on the gradient bar to add a new gradient slider. Double click it and replace the color with 255, 225 and 115. Set the location of this new color to 85% and then hold down the shift key to drag a copy to the left. And for this one, set the location to 40%. Click again on the gradient bar, double click this new color and replace the color with 231, 184 and 70. Set the location of this new color to 55 and then drag this color to the left and set the location to 30%. Click just one more time on the gradient bar. For this one, set the location to 15% and for the color, enter 134, 91 and 17. For the final touches, let's add some subtle drop shadow effects. Go to Effect, Stylize and Drop Shadow. Change the blend mode to normal. Lower the opacity to 40%. Set the horizontal offset to 0 pixels and the vertical offset to 2 pixels. Lower the blur to 0 pixels, replace this color with 0, 9 and 46, click OK and OK to apply this first effect and then go again to Effect, Stylize and Drop Shadow. Lower the opacity to 20%, increase the vertical offset to 4 pixels, click OK to apply this second drop shadow effect. And then go one more time to Effect, Stylize and Drop Shadow. For this effect, lower the opacity to 10%. Increase the vertical offset to 8 pixels. Click OK to apply this third effect. And with this final touch, your design is complete. If you're not happy with this gold gradient, you can always try a silver gradient. Check out the link in the description if you wish to learn how you can create this silver gradient along with some nice text effects. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to hit that like button as it helps me know that I did a good job. Subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.